Hi, everyone. I am Nicole Elizabeth Dimery. I am a B2B SaaS consultant. I have quite a few passion topics, and one of them is aligning SaaS content marketing with product management and customer success. And that is what I'm talking about now. Um, and I break it down into four steps. So um, the four steps to align SaaS content marketing and product management that I take are identifying your ideal customer, establishing language market fit. And I say establish because language market fit is an ongoing process that you should always, always, always be working on. And you'll also want to determine your ideal customer's desired outcomes and address the success gaps that are in the way of your customers meeting their success milestones to get to their desired outcomes. So you will want to get started with identifying your ideal customer. Um, and I think of this as the first step because you can't really know what language to use to speak to your customers until you know who they are. Be sure to understand that your product is not for everyone. Also, ideal customers are defined before marketing personas. An ideal customer is someone who has a problem you are uniquely equipped to solve, who is willing, able, and happy to pay for your solution, and who is delighted to have found you. And when I say who is happy to pay for your solution, I mean they are paying. Um, they're not just saying that they will. There's a really big difference. You'll find that in the early stages, a lot of people may say that they will pay for it, but then they don't. So be sure that when you're taking that in consideration, look at, look at who is actually paying for your product. And there's a lot of confusion around ideal customers, especially among startup founders. It's too easy to think that any customer who buys from you is ideal. And this might come from the old adage, the customer is always right, but that's wrong. To identify your ideal customer, you'll be starting from one of two places. Your business already has customers or your business is brand new or, or still in the idea phase and you don't have any or many customers. If your business already has customers, then you've probably noticed that some of these customers love you. They're exactly the kind of customers you wish you could multiply by the thousands. Make a list or a segment of these customers by appropriate experience. Know who they are and how to reach them. And when creating this list, make sure that the customers on it are in fact achieving their goals with your product. And appropriate experience is how the customers need to be treated and supported by you so they can re reach their desired outcome. An example of that is low touch versus high touch customers. And of course, you're going to want to get more specific about that depending on your product. If your business is brand new, um, make sure to answer the following questions to the best of your ability. What problems does your product or service solve? Who has that problem? And be as specific as possible. Remember, your product isn't for everyone. Are they ready, willing, and able to solve those problems with your solution? Does your product help those people not only solve the problem, but also meet their desired outcomes? Who really needs to solve the problem or their lives will be ruined? And so basically, it's not just about having a problem, it's about the severity of the problem. And what jobs does your product help your ideal customers do better? And how do these jobs get the customer closer to their desired outcomes? And whether or not you believe the customer is always right, not every customer is right for you. And that's okay. In fact, it's great because that means you can safely get rid of customers who take up all of your customer service agent's time, return more products than they buy, complain about you on social media, and generally make your life and the lives of your employees very difficult.
Keep in mind that your ideal customers are not your marketing personas. Defining ideal customers comes way before any marketing initiatives when we're building the foundation for customer success and customer de development for our SaaS. For example, a founder at one type of startup will have a different motivation, desire, budget, and so on from a founder at another type of startup. There's a different kind of nuance when defining ideal customers versus marketing personas. To establish language market fits, I recommend picking up the book Value Proposition Design and getting it in a physical format. It's a really beautiful book and it's very intensive. So it'll ask you sometimes the same question over and over from different angles so that you're deeply thinking about the language that your customers are using and how you can use that same language to communicate with them that you are uniquely equipped to solve their pain points. Once you've determined who your ideal customer is, and you've gone through the value proposition design book, you can create marketing personas based on those ideal customers. And once you've got those personas defined, you can start working on your SaaS content calendar. And this calendar should include inbound marketing content for awareness consideration and decision making and customer success content for retention, monetization, delight, and so on. So you want to bring both together to create a unified SaaS content calendar that gets potential customers interested in your product or service and then gets current customers staying interested in your product or service. And in the book, The Value Proposition Design, it goes through gains, pains, and customer jobs. And gains are the desired outcomes your customers want to achieve. Pains are the customer's pain points, the problems you can solve. Customer jobs are what customers are trying to get done in their work and or lives. HubSpot offers a resource on how to create detailed buyer personas for your business. Um, this is for if you don't want to take a really deep, deep dive and you kind of just want to create something um, like you're in a rush or something like that. But instead, I would highly recommend working through jobs to be done and creating personas that way so that you can understand why your ideal customers take the actions that they do rather than just assigning personality traits to them that don't really tell you why and knowing the why is really important to being able to predict future actions. So um, going back to creating the, the SaaS content calendar, um, you'll need to be able to understand your customer's desired outcomes before you can create the customer success content part of the calendar. So retention begins with good onboarding and good onboarding begins with the customer. User flow design should not begin with asking yourself questions, but with asking your customers what they really want to achieve, i.e. their desired outcomes. Then you can ask yourself how to get them there. Gathering qualitative data on what your users want to achieve is the foundation of a customer-centric engagement. Before you can break successes down into milestones, you'll need to understand what success means for your customer, how they measure it, how their bosses measure it, and what they hope your product will ultimately do for them. Qualitative data can be gathered through individual interviews, open-ended surveys, or focus groups. But whichever method you use, I would suggest asking ideal customers who are those who stand to gain the most from using your product, are likely to love and recommend your product, and are happy to pay for your product. And if you ask for feedback from anyone who doesn't meet these criteria, you won't get the answers you need to attract the customers that you really want. Once you know what success looks like to your customer, it's time to build a structure that lets them reach it. As you may have noticed in the course of sifting through voice of customer data, your customer's ideal outcomes are well outside of your product, at least most products. 
So for example, if I purchase a calorie counting diet app, my success isn't filling in my meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's a success milestone. My success is feeling fit, strong, confident, and beautiful. So using the diet app to monitor caloric consumption will help me reach my goal, but it's only one tool. Achieving this goal also requires exercise, willpower, determination, moral support, and the ability to overcome everyday obstacles. These are called success gaps, and they are the hurdles between your customer and their success that your product doesn't address. Yet, to be successful with your product, your customers have to navigate these gaps. A good customer success program helps customers achieve their desired outcomes and does so with customer success content. So in this example, you might have content on the best exercises for burning calories or how to get an accountability partner to help you with willpower and determination or how to find communities for moral support. And again, those things are outside of your product, but they can be in the form of content that you offer to your ideal customers. And to show you what this looks like, I've got a really, really simple flow. Um, you, you're going to see something like user, success milestone, success gap, success milestone, desired outcome. So our goal is to bring the product user flow together with the customer success user flow so the functionality inside the product meets the desired outcomes outside of the product. So in this case, we've got the user who is um, someone who is exercising. We've got success milestones, which are tracking calories. We've got success gaps, which are willpower, determination, avoiding that chocolate cake. And we've got success milestones again when they're able to overcome those success gaps and eventually they, they reach their desired outcome. And that was accomplished through not only using your product, but also educational materials that you offered in addition to your product. So that kind of content could be blogs, in-app messages, drip campaigns, webinars, academies and courses, knowledge bases, and so on.